Welcome to Linger Longer with Books. In this episode, I thought I would chat through my book haul from the weekend, as well as a really special theatre trip I made last Wednesday. So first up, um, I'll go through my book haul. And I have to say that I did a really naughty thing. And I actually got a book from the local supermarket, which I know is not a great thing for the book industry. I really support what, what Simon Savage of Savage Read says but it's confession time, I guess. So I did make a purchase and it's the third book in the Akatar series by Sarah J Mass. I've got the first and the second. I've read the first. Um, I've got the second to read on my TBR and now I've got the third, which is The Court of w Wings and Ruin. It's quite a chunky one. So I'm looking forward to reading this as soon as I can, but I will be reading them in order. Um, I found uh, the first um, story, A Court of Thorn and Roses, a perfect summer read last year. So I'm definitely th feeling that the second book in the series um, that I have are ready to go is definitely going to be a spring or a summer read for me. Okay, and then I went to one of my lovely local libraries and discovered that they were having a fantastic book sale on and really couldn't resist. Um, there was an offer three for a pound. So I'll go through the first three. You might have guessed there might be more than three in total. Um, but first up is uh, The Memoir Hungry by Grace Dent. And I've heard fantastic things about this. Sorry for the shine. It's got one of those um, really uh, sturdy and good library covers on it. Um, this has been um, described as heartfelt, witty and joyous. Hungry shows us what we've always known to be true. Food, friends and family are the indispensable ingredients of a life well lived. So I'm really looking forward to getting to that quite soon. Um, the next book I picked up was another non-fiction and this is um one of the lonely planet travel series on dublin um my twin sister her husband and my young niece um live near dublin so um i am quite a regular visitor to dublin since the last sort of 15 months or so since they moved there um and dublin is a really sort of familiar city to me and one i love exploring every time that i fly over um, but I just thought it would be handy just to have a bit of a reference point with this travel guide. I don't think you can ever know everything about a particular city or a town or a landmark um, or a place that is special to you. So um, I do like collecting these lonely planet guides um, to places that are kind of meaningful to me or significant um, in terms of memories. So this will be going on um, my Lonely Planet um, part of my bookshelf, which is behind me, and it will be quite a lot of blue um, as the time goes on. So that's another really nice one. It's really good condition, so I was really pleased to pick that one up. Um, next, we're going to fiction, and Denise Miner, who I'm a big fan of, she actually wrote um, this fantastic short story, um, Rizzio, um, which is part of the Darkland Tales series. Um, I was a huge fan, but I know that this is a completely different um, genre to Rizzio. Um, but if I just share a little bit about what that's about, it might intrigue you as well. So it's described as... William Watt is an ordinary businessman, a fool, a social climber. Peter Manuel is a famous liar, a rapist, a criminal. He claims he can get hold of the gun used to murder Watt's family. One December night in 1957, Watt meets Manuel in a Glasgow bar to find out what he knows. Based on true events, The Long Drop is an extraordinarily unsettling, evocative and compelling novel from a writer at the height of her powers. That just sounds completely up my street. Um, I'm really, really intrigued to read that. And I don't know, I just find that crime and thrillers and stories that are based on true events just grip me that little bit more than pure fiction. So I will let you know how that one goes when I get that onto my, my TBR very, very soon. Um, then outside of the three for pound, three for one pound deal, um, the remaining books were sort of 50p each if you obviously didn't buy them in threes. And I got 
Robert Harris Act of Oblivion. Um, I was lucky enough to see Robert speak um, at Capital Crime a couple of years ago now. Um, and this just sounded um, completely gripping when I heard him speak about it. I can't believe I haven't read any Robert Harris before, um, but I'm determined to change that. So I'll just share a little bit of the blurb with you. Um, 1660, Colonel Edward Wally and his son-in-law, Colonel William Goff, crossed the Atlantic. Having been found guilty of high treason for the murder of Charles I, they are wanted and on the run. A reward hangs over their heads for their capture, dead or alive. Now, I don't really need to read on any more than that. I am hooked and I want to know more. Um, it's a particular period of history um, that I haven't really read much of in fiction, so... Um, I want to dive into it and see what that's like in this world um, and, and tick a Robert Harris off my list. So um, I hope to get to that very soon and share my thoughts with you all as well. Um, outside of my local library, there are um, uh, some charity shops and I ducked into um, Marie Curie Cancer Care, which in the UK is um, a well-supported um charity cancer charity obviously um and i picked up a book that is really popular at the moment given um the movie that's out and it's the idea of you by robin lee um if any of you have sort of not heard the hype about this i'll just share a little bit off the back cover at 39, Selene marchand is a devoted mother a dedicated colleague and a considerate ex-wife but it's a long time since she's felt like herself. So when someone comes along who seems to see her, to want her for who she really is, the attraction is instant. And so begins a jet-setting, earth-shattering secret love affair. I'm not a big romance reader, but that, that really did grab my attention. Perhaps it's something to do with the main character being a similar age to me. Um, and who doesn't like a bit of romance and being swept off their feet at some point in their lives? So I picked this up, as you can see from the sticker, for a brilliant 75p. I really couldn't resist that one. So there you have it. Those were my book buys from Saturday. Um, let me know in the comments below what you think of the book haul. Perhaps leave an emoji at the smiley face with the stars for the eyes um, if you think that this is a good haul. I'd really appreciate knowing what you think. Or also, alternatively, if you've read any of these stories or these um, non-fiction titles before, let me know what you think of them. Um, I'd be really fascinated to, to hear more from you out there. So there you have it. That's my book haul. So now I just wanted to share some reflections and thoughts about my trip to the theatre last week. Um, my local theatre, the Mayflower, is lucky enough to have some fantastic national tours um, and stage productions that come to town. And as soon as I saw that an Agatha Christie play um, was on, I knew that I had to get tickets. Um, so this was based on And Then There Were None, which is a novel by Agatha. Um, and it's set just at the outbreak of the Second World War in 1939. And the basic premise is that a group of strangers are invited to um, a remote island off um, the coast of England. Um, they don't know one another and they um, are a little bit unsure and it's not exactly clear kind of who's quite invited them. Um, they're, they're kind of invited there under false pretenses. But what you soon find, thanks to a chilling um, recording that's played on a gramophone of the times, is that they are all holding really, really dark, horrible secrets that have come to the surface and are being exposed through this gramophone recording. And what happens is they each start being killed one by one, according to um, uh, an old fashioned nursery rhyme, which I won't recount now because I don't remember the exact words. Um, so what did I think about the actual stage production at the Mayflower? I thought it was really clever in the kind of the, the foreground, the sort of the, the stage was split into two. So the immediate kind of front half to the audience was almost like a traditional lounge area of the 1930s with like a cocktail trolley and nice kind of luxurious sofas. 
the, the the sort of the back half of the stage was divided there was a net curtain making that division but then um, that really played into scenes that were kind of playing on shadows with different characters that kind of were there weren't there to add that sort of air of mystery as the kind of plot unraveled in front of you um, and it was really cleverly done for quite a small stage area and quite sort of simple um, props and, and kind of simple um, stage directions um, and I think that's the beauty of and then there were none it's just it it's just brilliant simplicity I really loved the costume design um, I really find the 1930s um, outfits really quite glamorous um, you have the kind of cocktail dinner wear and um, people actually quite dress quite basically as well you kind of get the whole spectrum of the, the fashions of the time um, I thought the acting was really really good um, let's just have a look about who was there that I recognized you can imagine from a national cast it had quite it had quite the caliber of actors um so who did we have we had the likes of bob barrett playing dr armstrong he's been known for um tv shows such as casualty absolutely fabulous he's been in the film shakespeare with love um we had andrew lancel who was playing um william bloor who's always quite um a kind of mischievous and dark character of them um he i recognized from um what's he been in bad girls heartbeat um marcella um and who else have we got here i'm just flicking through we also had david yelland as judge wargrave um he's obviously got quite quite a career history here um you will know him from the likes of the film um chariot sophia um and he's got tv credits including um father brown and endeavor so a really really kind of established cast because i do think that agatha christie adaptations of her novels and her kind of straightforward plays really really do um, call for um, a high quality cast to be able to deliver the the sort of simple th right through to the really quite sophisticated plots it feels like she always commands a really good cast um, and and gets the the audiences kind of in their seats um, so I was really pleased to see and then there were none it had been touring it's been touring the UK since I think last September and Southampton was its last stretch, so it's now finished. Um, but I'm really pleased to see on the Mayflower website that I think in early 2025, a production of um, Murder on the Orient Express is coming to town. So I'm already looking at tickets for that because I think that would be really interesting to see again how that's played out on stage, given that it's set on a on a train albeit kind of a initially moving train and then a, a train that's caught in a snowdrift so i'll be really interested to see how they kind of devise those interactions between the, the characters um and and kind of what unravels in that particular story too so there you have it there you have my my kind of book haul from the week and as well as you have the my thoughts on the theater show that i went to see so um, please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Did you get to see and then there were none? Um, if you did, what did you reckon? Um, did it live up to the story? Um, I think the only feedback I would give, I'm always quite sad to see um, the purist in me, um, that some of the names of the characters were changed. Um, uh, some of the the kind of the smaller references through the dialogue was also changed but I do appreciate that they do have to kind of almost um, freshen it up to to some extent um, so I'll, I will forgive it but yeah let me know what you thought as well but I will be reporting back soon on um, my my reads um, but until that's that happens I, I hope you have a really good time reading um and i will catch you next week in my next episode of linger longer with books um but thanks for watching and see you next time bye <laughs>